Good day, my name is Connor. Uh, this is a tutorial on mortars within ACE3. Um, today we're going to be using uh, RHS. Uh, we've got the M252, the uh, US and the Marine Corps uh, mortar in RHS. Um, however, the stuff we're going to talk about today applies to all artillery systems and mortars um, in the game when you're using the uh, ACE3 realism uh, features for uh, indirect fire. Um, just uh, things are going to be slightly different in the way that uh, the numbers work out but all the procedures should be uh, almost uh, almost precisely the same. So, uh, first thing we're going to go over is uh, what we need uh, in our inventory. We're going to need an artillery range table. Uh, we're going to need a map tools, and we're also going to need a map. Uh, those are the three things that are required. Uh, technically, you could get away with not using map tools. However, your first rounds are going to be extraordinarily inaccurate um, because you won't have the precision that you need. So we're going to open up our map and we're going to locate where we're at. Um, I can see uh, my, my grid, so I'm going to find us here. Uh, so this is the grid we're in. I'm going to look at my GPS and see that we're right about here on that black dot. Confirm with my GPS, I'm going to shift it. Shift it a little more. All right, cool. So I've put this black dot right, black dot right here exactly where we are. Um, if you don't know how to locate yourself on the map, um, I recommend you looking up uh, how to do that before you continue on. Uh, using uh, your grid references and uh, referencing the map. Once we've got our location down, uh, we can then uh, talk about how to operate this mortar. So uh, the first thing I'm going to remark on is mortar positioning. It's important to place your mortar in a spot where it can fire. Um, number one, you got to make sure you're in a clear area. Um, if there was a tree right here in the way of the mortar barrel, and I attempt to fire the mortar, it's going to hit the tree right in front of me, and it's going to explode, and it's going to kill me and anybody else with me, which is not going to be very convenient. So we want to make sure that we have a clear uh, area around the mortar, at least in the direction we're firing. It would be okay if we have trees to the left and right, as long as we know that we're going to be firing out in that range over there. If for some reason we may need to shoot to our left or our right, and we've got trees there, this is going to be a bad mortar position because we're going to need to shift it in order to fire. To our, uh, to, our, to our north out here, or to our south. Forgive me for opening my, uh, my NVGs there. Uh, second thing in mortar positioning is getting flat terrain. Now, technically, you can operate a mortar on slanted terrain. Um, and in fact, this ground here is uh, slightly not flat. We can see there's a little bit of gradient to the, to the earth. Um, it will affect how we operate the mortar. The more uh, your mortar is on slanted ground, the more inconvenient and difficult it's going to be for the gunner. Um, and we'll, we'll note on that later. So to recap, uh, make sure your mortar is clear of any obstacles it may hit while firing, and make sure it is on a relatively flat ground. Now, once we've worked that out, um, time to get familiar with the, uh, the mortar uh, systems real quick. So we're going to hop in the mortar, and so once we hop in, we can see we can uh, move this thing around. Um, doesn't give us any information. Uh, however, once we right click into the mortar scope, here's where we get a lot more help. Now, this mortar scope here doesn't really do anything. Um, moving it up and down doesn't do anything. Moving it left to right does change where it's pointed, um, but in order to know where it's pointed, we have to get a little deeper into it. If you look into the top right, uh, we have the 81 millimeter mortar, and we have a few different pieces of information. We have our charge, we have our round type, uh, so charge zero and HE, or high explosive, respectively. We have our azimuth, AZ, and we have our elevation, EL. It's a lot of things. Uh, we're going to worry about them one at a time. So first off, charge. If we press F, or whatever your fire mode switch key is, we can move through the charges from one to four. Uh, different mortars or artillery pieces may have more or fewer charges. That's not important. All we need to know is how to switch them and how to know which one to use. All a charge is, is it changes the velocity with which the round comes out of the mortar. So basically, if we have a higher charge, a charge 4 will shoot out faster than a charge 0. And if it's shooting out faster, it's going to go farther. That's, that's all that it is. So for example, a charge 0 mortar may have this range. A charge 1 mortar may have this range. A charge 2 this range, and so on and so forth. This is not drawn to scale, by the way. Uh, the maximum range on this system is going to be about 3 kilometers, so you're going to be able to reach about 
this far, more or less. My drawing's <laughs> not quite circular, but you get the idea. That's about the range we're working with with this mortar system. To see this um, in more detail, we can uh, use our ACE self-interaction key. By default, that's going to be your control left windows. We're going to go to equipment, and then this right here, M252 star. The artillery range table uh, does a cool thing uh, where um, whenever you're near an RD system, any indirect system, it will uh, give you the range table for it. So if we were near um, an artillery piece, like an M109, for example, it would have an M109 range table here for us. However, it's got this one, M252. We can confirm just by looking at the mortar thing. Uh, and yep, that's the M252. Cool. We go to equipment, M252, and we'll open this up. The way we do that is uh, by holding control left windows, hover over equipment, hover over M252, and then let go of control and windows. This range table looks scary, however, um, fortunately for us, generally, we can ignore about 80% of it. All we need to care about is uh, this charge tab over here on the left, this range column on the left side, the elevation column on the left side, and sometimes the third column, um, the, the distance elevation per 100 meters of, uh, I don't know what the D and the DR stand for, but I know I, I'll, I'll explain what it means later. So, charge 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll notice that it gets longer as we go up in charges. Now, if you look at that range column, that range column describes uh, the range that the mortar can shoot at. So at charge 0, we can see that we're not going very far. Uh, we're going 50 meters, 100 meters, or 150 meters. At charge 4, we can shoot from 550 to 3,100 meters. Um, and you notice we can't shoot any closer than 550. Uh, the round comes out of the barrel too fast for us to shoot any closer than that. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to pick different charges for different situations. Um, the charge picking doesn't get much more complex than that. Um, in some cases we'll favor a higher charge over a lower charge. Uh, for example, if we want to shoot at uh, 1200 meters, um, sometimes we'll prefer charge 3's 1200 meters over charge 2's 1200 meters. Um, even though they can both shoot at 1,200 meters, uh, sometimes charge 3s can be more beneficial, and we'll explain why that is later. Now, we've covered charges, different ranges. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to hop back into the mortar here, and we're going to look at uh, elevation. So, uh, elevation shows on the right side, and uh, as I press my page up and my page down key, you're going to see it's going up and down, that number. If I zoom out, and I press my page up and down key, you should be able to notice that the mortar itself is moving as well. Um, this is how we change how far we shoot the mortar. Um, think about throwing a rock. If you throw a rock straight up, it's not going far. If you throw a rock out away from you, it's going to go a lot farther, right? That's all we're doing with this mortar, is we're changing uh, the direction up and down that we're shooting it, so it's going to go further or shorter. Uh, this elevation has a number associated with it. As we go higher in elevation, the mortar points higher and goes less far. Uh, make sure not to mix this up. As we go down in elevation, the mortar points further down and goes more far. It goes further. So uh, mortar pointed down, elevation small number means uh, the round goes further, and uh, elevation high number, mortar points up, round goes a shorter distance. How the hell do we find this elevation number? Wonderful question. We're going to go back to our artillery range table, and we're going to look at our charge zero now because it's simple. We're going to find the range to target on the left side. So our range, we have 50, 100, and 150 meters. Let's say our target is 100 meters away. Once we find 100 meters, we're going to look at the number directly to its right. This is our elevation value. For this, it will be 1258, 1,258 mils. Um, for communication purposes, I recommend saying all four numbers individually. So saying elevate 1258. So we're going to do that real quick. We're going to come into our mortar. And we're going to go 1258, 1258. Now, uh, this is a little finicky. I'm pressing our page up and down buttons. I can't get, oh, I got 1258 exactly. But you notice it's kind of it's kind of tricky to do. Sometimes I'm going to bounce around one two five nine, one two five seven. There, it's pretty tricky. Um, if you're one two three mils off, 
it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, that's going to be anywhere from like one meter to like six or seven meters off. If you're off by a couple mils, not a big deal. Just get close. Spending 10 seconds uh, messing with it is going to be uh, not worth your time. So we found our elevation, which is great, but we still have no idea where the hell the mortar is going because we haven't pointed it at anything, right? Here's where it gets tricky. Um, you guys are almost certainly used to using uh, 360 degree bearings. So if I pull my compass up, let's say uh, that that rock out there, that rock is what we want to shoot at. So I'm going to find that rock, put it in the line on my compass, and I'm going to look at my compass right here. And uh, this is 100 degrees, this is 110 degrees, so this rock is maybe 104 degrees. Right? And then if I look at my GPS on the left side, I can see it does read 104 degrees. So, perfect. If I want to tell somebody where something is, I say look at uh, 104 degrees. Now the problem is 104 degrees describes this whole arc. As you can see moving left to right, my GPS still reads 104. Now this isn't such a big deal at this range, because uh, this range is only going to be like 600 meters. Yeah, only about 600 meters. However, that arc gets a lot wider when we're shooting at like two kilometers out. So using bearings at two kilometers out means we're going to have like a, like a 50 meter air, which is too much. So we use an even more accurate number. Uh, we're going to use milliradians. Um, you'll notice on the outside of the compass we have different numbers. Now this goes from 18 to 19 to 20 with a lot of little hash marks. To see these more clearly, we're going to open up our map tools on the map. So we're going to open up our map. We're going to locate where we are. I've marked this black dot for us to mark our position. We're going to open up the A-Self interaction with the control left windows. Go to our map tools and we're going to show small map tool. Um, small and large map tool are going to look pretty much the same. One is bigger, one is smaller. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to use the small and uh, move up to the to the larger one if we need to. Now, real quick, we can move this on our map around with just by left click and dragging it. Inside of our compass, we have this little uh, little black mark here. That black mark is going to be uh, pretty important. We need to just put that on us. We need to center it on our location. So we're going to zoom in to do that. The more accurate that black mark is, uh, the more accurate your mortars are going to be. So if I have my black mark over here, it's going to be close enough sometimes, but it's also going to pretty severely mess us up if we're trying to be accurate with it. So we're going to put that black marker right over top of where we are. Now, uh, to turn this thing, to use it, we're going to hold our left alt key and then drag. And now you'll see it's staying in place and we're spinning this rectangle. Perfect. Now you recognize this compass interface. On the inside of this compass, we have our normal 360 degree compass bearings. Um, however, we're not going to touch these. Um, this is not what we use when we're working with mortars. When we're working with mortars, we use this outside ring from 0 to 62 to 63 to 64. Milliradians have 6400 uh, divisions, 6400. So this number 2 here represents 200, not 2. And this number 18 here represents 1,800, not 18. Uh, also, notably, these subdivisions here, people get confused with this frequently. Um, these are not subdivisions of 1, they're not subdivisions of 5, or 10, they're subdivisions of 20. So we go from 2, which is 200, to 220, 240, 260, 280, and then 300. If you mess that up, you're going to be off uh, inaccurately pretty frequently. Again, we start at 54 to 5420 to 5440 to 5460 to 5480 to 5500. Being more accurate than 5 or 10 milliradians is usually not worth your time. Um, if we're shooting inside of 3 kilometers, guesstimating that this line here is on 210 is going to be just as useful as 215 or 220 because realistically that's not going to change where our red line ends up by very much you know it's the difference between our red line pointing here and our red line pointing here it's only maybe 15 meters so we're gonna we're gonna estimate our distances uh a little uh, a little 
inaccurately. I'm going to place a uh, mortar call for fire marker on a target. I'm going to deliberately pick a target real quick. Um, we will use... I'm looking for a flat area nearby that can uh, be very visible when we drop these rounds. Here's a decent spot. I'm going to drop my call for fire marker uh, right here. I'm just going to name it CFF1. That's going to be our first call for fire. Now, to find the direction I need to point my mortar, once I have placed this black mark over top of my location, I've centered my uh, map tool. I'm going to hold Alt and left click and rotate this around. I'm going to point it at my CFF marker. This isn't enough. We need to zoom in. Oh, wow, I've done that quite perfectly. We need to zoom in and hold alt again and correct this red line to go directly over top the center of that cff marker again precision matters um, if i just work it from out here oh i've accidentally shifted my map marker or my map tool so i'm going to put, put it back if i am off like this it looks close enough from up here but we'll notice down here it's uh, five or ten meters off which is inaccuracy that we don't want so we're just going to take the two seconds extra to zoom in and shift it on now, we're going to come up to the map tool, and we're going to read the direction. So, I'm reading 34, and dead on the second subdivision. So, remember this is 3400, or 3400, 32, sorry, 3420, 3420, and then a 3440, so 3440. I'm going to mark that down for us. You may want to write this down, or uh, repeat it to a partner. Uh, however, for the purpose of this, I'm just simply going to write it down in chat. Uh, normally, I would be writing it down on paper um, when I'm doing this uh, in an operation. 3440. Now, I'm going to hop into my mortar. I'm going to look at my azimuth number in the top right corner, that AZ. And I'm going to point my mortar to 3440. Now, this is pretty tricky to get exact. You may, um, if you have the opportunity have a button on your mouse that can lower your sensitivity um, at the click of a button. That's pretty handy. I know some people have done that. Me personally, I just get close and do my best. All right, my mortar is now at 3440-ish, close enough for me. I'm going to pull up my map again. Now, uh, in order to find the range to my target so that I can properly set my elevation, uh, we're going to use the map tool again. You'll notice on this side of the map tool, we have this handy ruler. Um, you'll notice that we also have a ruler here uh, in, the, in the middle of the map tool in an L shape. Um, this is not necessarily for measuring distances like we're using. Technically, it's accurate. I do not recommend using it. Um, it's, uh, it's for a different purpose. So we're going to car carefully, without changing the orientation of our map tool, we're going to drag it. See, we're not changing the orientation. It's still pointing in the right direction. We're going to drag it. We're going to zoom in, and we're going to look at that zero hash mark, that long hash mark, and place it right at where we are. We don't need to place it over. We're going to place it just like this. Now, with that placed, we're going to zoom in on our call for fire marker, and we're going to see on this ruler exactly where it's located. Um, this one here is 1,000 meters, this two here is 2,000 meters, and these large hash marks here are subdivisions of 100 meters. So 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, and then this uh, uh, larger hash mark is 1,500. So uh, we, we, we're closer to 2,000, so we can just count back. So 2,000, 1,900, 1,800, and we can see that we can count 1,800, 1,810, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1,850 meters. So I'm going to write this down real quick. Generally, I do not uh, look at distances any more accurate than the nearest 50 meter. Um, if you want to be more accurate, you absolutely can, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you uh, how to do that later. However, generally I find it's best to get a round out quickly instead of spending an extra 20 seconds doing some math. So, 
We've got our round at 1,850 meters. We're going to go back into our mortar and carefully, without touching our mouse, so that we jostle off of our correct azimuth. We are going to open up our uh, artillery range table. We are going to locate 1,850 meters, I believe. Is that what we're working with? Yeah, 1,850 meters. So charge zero, don't have it. Charge one, only goes up to 600. Charge two, 1300. Charge three, we have 1850. Uh, near the bottom, we have 1850. You can't see my mouse, um, but it's like six up from the bottom. So 1,850 meters, we're going to elevate to 1,074 mils. So mils 1,074. So exiting this, I live 1,074. I'm going to use my page up and page down key, or whatever you use to range your weapon. And I'm going to go to 1074. 1074. Perfect. Now, if I fire this round right now, I'm going to miss entirely. I'm going to impact the trees in front of me. The reason is I'm on the wrong charge. In order to change my charge, I have to use my change fire mode option. And remember that we are on charge 3, 1850. 1074. I'm going to go to charge 3. I'm going to verify that my azimuth is correct. I can do so by looking at my map tools. 3440. 3440 check. Charge 3 check. Elevation 1074 check. And if all is well, I can fire this round with left click. I can open up my Zeus interface here and travel over to my call for fire marker. which should be this open field here. We can place, uh, we'll just drop a Boko Haram technical here. I might call for power, put some people in it so we can see what happens to them. All right, and look at that, our mortar round landed. Now notice it uh, didn't do anything to this vehicle. Um, mortars sometimes don't, uh, but we can look at uh, how close that mortar round came. So we'll come over here. I will teleport myself directly on top of this uh, call for fire marker. And I'll pull out my range finders, point them here, 23 meters. So our first round was 23 meters off. Um, if I had infantry out here, 23 meters is within the kill range. Um, not uh, It won't kill every infantry, um, but if there is infantry walking around here, they will be wounded and possibly killed uh, within 23 meters. So that's... Uh, that's a pretty accurate round. Now, let's say we were off by a lot more than this. If we're off by 23 meters, typically we're not going to correct it anymore. Um, we're simply going to shoot our rounds. But if we're off by like 70 meters, um, we're probably going to need to correct our round again before we start shooting six or eight uh, rounds at the target. So to do so, uh, we're going to uh, look at where our mortar landed. So we're just going to do this roughly right now. Um, our mortar landed northeast by 20 meters. So to correct this, we need to move it southwest by 20 meters. We're going to go to our mortar system here. So correcting southwest by 20 meters is uh, going to be a little tricky, so we're going to have to look at our map. Okay. So our mortar round landed about here, and we need it to land, you know, here, <laughs> where a marker is. So there are a few different ways to do this. Uh, the method I'm going to show you is imperfect, but will do a good enough job. What we're going to do is we're going to recenter our uh, map tools, and we can do this while the mortar is in flight, by the way. We can uh, prep for all of these corrections. Then we're going to correct our left right. So we're going to note that 3440 mils is where we started. We're going to move our mortar onto the target, onto the marker of where we landed. Again, because we'll have somebody on the ground that says we landed 20 meters northeast. So we're going to place a marker about 20 meters northeast. We're going to place our map tool aligned with where the mortar hit. 
And we're going to note that that has shifted our red line here by what appears to be about 5 mils, right? We've gone about 5 mils. Since we need to make a 5 mil correction, we need to check which direction we need to correct. Um, here, uh, we, can, we can just watch uh, whether we correct uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, so since we're correcting uh, clockwise, we need to shift our mortar to the right. So we're going to shift our mortar right by 5 mils, which is going to end up at 3446, 3445. All right, 3446 works for me. Now, once we've corrected our left right, we need to collect we need to correct our uh, our long and short. So we're going to look right here, and we're going to measure the distance uh, between these points. Now, what's important is that we're not measuring this distance here. We're not measuring the direct distance. What we're measuring is the distance with our map tool pointed at them. So we want to we want to measure how far we were we were off like this because we've already made our left right correction right we've corrected our mortar to this point and now we need to correct our mortar in this way if that makes sense so this right here is our left right correction and now this is our long short correction so to make our long short correction we're going to measure the distance here, 10, 20 meters. We know that we need to correct 20 meters, so we're gonna open up our range table, go to where we were previously, um, and we need to correct 20 meters uh, far. So we need to shoot 20 meters further. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna look what is 50 meters further, 1050. So we're starting from 1074. 1050 is 50 meters further. 20 meters is about half of 50, so we're going to look at the difference between 1074 and 1050. Well, the difference there is 24. What is half of 24? 12. So we need to correct about 12 mils, and if you're extra fancy, you know, 20 is uh, less than half of 50, we can correct by a little less than half of 24 mils, which is going to be a little less than 12, which we can call that 10. So we need to correct by 10 mils. Um, and now we need to know, do we need to correct long or short? Um, we need to correct long. Um, so we're going to correct 10 mils down, because we point the mortar down further, it goes farther. So we're going to correct 10 mils down from 1074 to 1064. So we're going to correct to 1064, and we've made our 5 mil right, 10 mil down correction, and we are going to fire around. Now we're going to come back over here. Uh, we're going to put a group of infantry uh, directly over top of our call for fire one marker. We're going to move them so that they're centered on it, just to demonstrate. So this round should hopefully be landing in the middle of this triangle formation here, right on this bald spot of grass. Okay. You notice that the round we fired uh, obliterated all of the infantry we were hoping to hit. And interestingly, our correction uh, didn't get us much closer than we started. So we can see this was our first round, and this was our second round. And they're not very far apart. Uh, these guys are maybe 30 or 40 meters away from each other. Uh, technically, this distance is a little closer than this distance, so our second round was a little closer. However, once we are in this circle here, around the call for fire, we're not going to be able to correct much closer on, because uh, a lot of the reason that we miss, we're missing is wind, uh, wind changes, um, and also being one mil off can put us five meters off or so. So we can see how that correction worked. We definitely corrected southwest like we wanted. We just overcorrected uh, by about twice as much as we needed. So if we really wanted to correct this on, we could uh, take half of our correction before um, and then bring it back. So our correction before was five mils right, 10 mils down. So we can go back up two mils, or sorry, back up five mils. 
So we'll go back up to 1069, and we can bring uh, we can bring it back two or three to the right. We'll fire that. So we're expecting our round to uh, land in the middle this time. So we're gonna we're gonna grab these guys. We're gonna put a new group back down. Hopefully, this round is going to be landing. Uh, right between our two old ones, you can see the debris on the ground. And would you look at that? So this third round landed right here. And we'll, we'll put a little dot on this. You can see these guys are all in a line here. Um, and this is about half. This is about half. It's a little off, but we're, we're working a little imperfectly, and we've got this round essentially as close as we can possibly get it to our call for fire one. That's uh, that's the basics of correction. Um, we're going to go through it one more time um, just to, uh, to demonstrate going through a little quicker. Um, but yeah, that's how we can uh, correct rounds onto target and get them accurate. We're going to get a new call for fire up. I'm going to find a new good location to put this down. Uh, I like this hilltop right here. We'll call that call for fire two. And I'm going to go through this a little quicker. Um, actually, one, two, three, that's going to be outside of our range. Uh, no, it will not be. I was looking at the wrong marker. <laughs> My bad. Uh, this is our call for fire two. Perfect. So from our call for fire two, uh, once we get that call in, first step, I'm going to center my uh, map tool on top of us. Secondly, I'm going to rotate my map tool to point at my call for fire marker. Uh-oh, my arrow is too short. What do I do? Uh, fortunately, I can go to my map tool and show normal map tool and get that uh, larger version. I'm going to zoom in on my call for fire 2. I'm going to correct my red arrow directly on top of it, and then I'm going to read my azimuth. Give myself a little spacer in chat there. My azimuth is going to be 6, 1 subdivision, 2 subdivisions. That's going to be 600, 620, 640. 6 AZ 640 for our azimuth. Once we've got our azimuth in, I'm going to move my map tool without turning it to be even with my location here. I'm going to find the range at which my call for fire marker falls. This is 2,000 meters, 21, 22, 23, 2400 meters. 2500 meters it falls in between them so we're going to call it uh 2450 technically it's 2460 but 10 meters difference is not going to make uh, a big difference so 2450 meters now that i've got this information i can look at chat azimuth 640 zoom into my mortar look at my az in the top right i'm going to go to 0640 that's close enough for me 0641 now my range, 2,450 meters. I'm going to open up my range table. I'm going to check charge 1, charge 2, charge 3. Nope, charge 4. Charge 4 is the first charge that has 2,450 meters, so that's what, the one I'm going to use. I find 2,450 meters on the range column on the left side. I look to the number to the right of it. That's going to be my elevation column. 2,450 meters corresponds to 1132 elevation, uh, 1,132 milliradians. So, elevation 1132, I'm going to press escape, not jiggle my mouse. I'm going to go to 1132, 1132, ah, close enough, L1132. I'm going to double check everything, azimuth 0641 check, elevation 1132 check, charge 3. Now, uh, this is uh, a mistake. If I fire charge 3 at elevation 1132, we're going to go 1,700 meters instead of the 24, uh, 2450 that we need. So I need to push to charge 4. Charge 4, check. Azimuth 0640, check. Elevation 1132, check. I'm going to drop my round. Once my round's been fired, we have about uh, 20 to 30 seconds. I'll uh, show you how to find exactly how long your round will take in a little bit. Uh, but we're going to get over to where we're going. I can't uh, use teleport on the map because I've recently broken my uh, my mouse wheel press button, which is a little inconvenient. So bear with me as we uh, locate 
our point, and real quick, we'll drop a target on it. Almost up. There we go. So our round should be coming in in uh, just a few seconds. Perfect. So uh, you'll note this terrain is not ideal terrain to mortar because of its uh, its hilltop. Uh, it's <laughs> they they hid behind the hilltop. Uh, but no but no big deal. For us, that's not what we care about right now. We're not looking for results. We're just looking for accuracy. So you notice um, where our mortar landed. An observer may tell us that our mortar landed uh, 50 meters north of target. So we are 50 meters north. So on our map, we're going to come over here, call for fire 2. We're going to place a little marker for ourselves 50 meters north of target. Now, to correct, what we're going to do is first correct left, right. So I'm going to place our map tool back on top of us. I'm going to uh, note my azimuth is 0640. I'm going to shift my uh, map tool onto uh, the point that I hit, not the point that I was aiming for. I'm going to note this azimuth uh, as closely as I can, 06. 2, 5, we'll call it, because this is 0, 6, 20, this is 0, 6, 30, so this is 0, 6, 2, 5 or so. The difference between 0, 6, 2, 5 and 0, 6, 4, 0 is going to be 15 mils. So we're going to shift 15 mils, mils right for azimuth 0, 6, 5, 5. What we did was we added 15 to 0, 6, 4, 0 to get 0, 6, 5, 5. So we're going to go into our mortar and we're going to shift to 0655, check. Now we need to uh, look at our distance. So we're going to, uh, with our map tool still pointed in the same direction, we're going to pull it up here, get our ruler out, and we're going to place our zero marker at even with this call for fire, right? We want it to be even. And then we're going to read this 0 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, 25. Looks like about 25 meters to me. So we need to drop 25 meters towards us. The way that we're going to do that, we're going to go to our table, we're going to go to charge 4, we're going to go to 1850, uh, correction, 2450, where we were. And we need to drop 25 meters. So we look at the closest drop, which is 50. So at 2400, we're 1145, and at 2450, we're at 1132. Uh, the difference there is going to be uh, 1145 minus 1132, which equals 13. And we need to drop uh, 25 meters, so exactly half of that. Exactly half of 13 is 6.5, so we're going to drop 6 or 7. Drop 6. Um, we're going to drop 6 mils. And 1132... Uh, plus, sorry, we're going to add 6 mils of elevation because we want to get closer to us. So we're not dropping mils, we're adding mils. Uh, so we're going to add 6 mils of elevation. So 1132 plus 6 uh, is going to be 1138. So we're going to come into our mortar carefully without jostling it left and right. We're going to shift to 1138. And we're going to check, charge 4, check, 1138, check, 0655, uh, uh, 0655, this is where it gets tricky, check, we're going to fire. Oh, <laughs> looks like our live targets have uh, rejected being live targets, they're not a fan. We're going to place oh, new that. live targets on the, on, the, on the call for fire marker to see what we can hit. Now hopefully this correction should get us close enough to fire for effect. Um, dump a whole bunch of rounds without caring about accuracy. We're going to have it landing in about 10 seconds here. Ideally we want the mortar to land somewhere on this right side of this hill face so we can get our splash effects to uh, infantry. Now we didn't kill any infantry, however we got a lot closer to where we wanted to be. Um, we see that uh, the round landed here, which roughly corresponds to about here on the map. Looks like, yeah. Perfect. I'll put that back into global channel. 
So you can see our correction. We were a little overzealous with correcting right. We corrected right a few too many mils, and we did not correct back quite enough. However, you can see that the distance between this round and this round to the target is a heck of a lot shorter, and uh, being within what appears to be 30 meters is definitely good enough for us. Good enough for me, personally. Um, you may, for your purposes, may need to be more accurate, so you may do a, a third correction. However, I'm going to work with that. I'm going to fire for effect, and my rounds are going to be landing in this circle anyways. So that's good enough for me. Perfect. So those are the basics of getting a mortar onto target. There are a few more factors to consider that we haven't talked about. For this, I'm going to use a couple crayons, so bear with me. Uh, we're going to be drawing a little bit over here in the white space. Uh, we are going to draw a 2D cutout of terrain. We're going to draw a second 2D cutout of terrain up here. I don't like that. We're going to draw a second 2D cutout of terrain up here. Perfect. Now, for this first cutout of terrain, we're going to be firing a mortar in an arc like this. Hmm. I was really precise with that arc, but I didn't like it. So we're going to draw that arc like this. In the second one, we're going to be drawing our mortar in an arc like this. Cool. I didn't like that arc either. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not I'm not crazy. It's, uh, there's a reason to my madness. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal yellow line that just goes uh, horizontally across. Uh, both of these firing positions uh, here. Okay, so this black here is our ground, right? This is our, uh, the black is our hills. So we're going to be firing from this position here, and our red is our mortar arc as it comes down, and it's going to impact the ground down here. Now what's really important to note is that at this green circle is where the mortar would impact when the target is at the same height as us. And this red, uh, this other green circle down here is where the mortar impacted when it hit the ground. Now you notice that there's a left and right distance here that's different. So if we just look at the range to our target, if we say, if we look on the map and we say that this right here is how far away our target is, well, if our target is down here on this purple dot, if this is where our target actually is, being lower elevation than us, our round is going to land far, because it's going to land over here. And vice versa, if we're shooting from below our target, and our round comes up and hits something way above us, it's going to impact at a point that we had not planned for. If we're, uh, if we're just looking at uh, the range to the target that our round would land at the same height as us, we're going to be shooting an arc that's going to be looking something like this, where our round lands here. See, because these are at the same height. And our round is going to be actually impacting at this red circle. Forgive my, my poor drawing, I hope this is understandable, uh, which is going to be short of our target. So in short, what's going to happen is that if our target is higher or lower than us, we need to compensate for that. because. Our calculations assume we're shooting on a flat piece of paper. And we're, and we're not shooting on a flat piece of paper. You can see we've got hilly terrain here. This is where the magical third column uh, becomes important. This third column here. So we have our range in our first column, our elevation in our second, and our D elev per 100 meters DR column in our in, uh, third column. You notice this column is a little less uh, straightforward than the other two. Um, the numbers uh, in the column goes up as we go further down the rows. And the reason this is, um, is because as our elevation gets more flat, the more uh, the height affects us. Um, so think if you throw something straight up um, and it goes like three meters away, it doesn't really matter if you're throwing it onto flat ground or you're trying to throw something onto your roof. It's going to go about the same distance forward if you throw it straight up. But if you throw something straight out in front of you, 
If there's a house in the way, it's going to impact the house instead of going the distance it could go if you're just throwing it on flat ground to get an idea of why this is. All you really need to know is that if the number in this third column is big, that's a problem. So here's an example of when this matters. Let's say we find a target that is exactly 600 meters away. The way I'm going to do this is a little cheap, but I'm just going to grab a target that's 600 meters away. I found one. Uh, let's see. This village up here. Uh, let's say we want to hit this village. Uh, we're going to call this Call for Fire 3. So if we want to hit Call for Fire 3, which is about 550 meters away, we're going to open up our map tools. We're going to place our map tools on top of us. We're going to point our arrow over here. Oh, see our arrows, uh, our map tool is actually kind of hiding this, so we're going to go down to our small map tool. We're going to point our arrow to Call for Fire 3. We're gonna, we don't care about the elevation right now because that's not important. We're not actually firing at this target. We're just going to check the range. Um, oh, <laughs> I've selected the wrong village. Pardon me. I meant to aim for this village. Uh, we're just going to kind of guess this. Doesn't really matter as long as we're close. Okay, so we see this is uh, 550, 600 meters. So we come into our range card and we check. Do, do we have 600 here? Nope. Do we have 600 here? Yeah, we have 550, 600 here. Perfect. Um, however, our change in elevation per 100 meters is high. It's 72 to 120. And we're going to take quick notes of our elevation here. Uh, we can see this 290. If we, if we draw a line along this red line here, we can see that we are at uh, 288 meters. If you don't believe me, check our GPS, um, which does not show it. Uh, my mistake. Um, we're at 288 meters. Just trust me on that. And then if we look over here, our call for fire is at 388 meters. So we have a 100 meter difference. What this number here means, at 600 meters, in this third column, that 120, that is 120 meters of elevation change in our mortar, 120 mils per 100 meters of elevation change on the terrain. So if we're shooting 100 meters above us or 100 meters below us, we need to adjust this mortar 120 mils. Now, 120 mils is a lot of mils. Um, 120 mils, depending on the range, is going to be missing by like 50, 100, 150, 200 meters, like a whole bunch of miss. So what we could do is we could look at the elevation of our target, look at our elevation, find out how much we're shooting above or below us, figure out um, what we need to adjust our mortar to solve for this, because if we're shooting above us, we need to point our mortar higher. Um, so we're going to be adding those 120 mils to our elevation. And if we're shooting below us, or correction, if we're shooting above us, we need to adjust our mills lower, because we need to shoot further. And if we're shooting below us, we need to adjust our mills higher, um, because we need to shoot uh, essentially closer. But instead of doing that, that's complicated. I don't like doing it. It makes me it makes me slow. We can just simply select charge two, and you notice for charge two, at 600 meters, we have a nine mil difference in our elevation, which is substantially lower. Now, what's important to note is that if you look carefully, nine mils corresponds to about a 25 meter miss. So, if you're really really caring about first round accuracy, we can even go up to charge four and fire with a essentially like a five meter inaccuracy with a hundred meters distance. So personally, if I'm firing at 600 meters with a hundred meter distance change, and I see that charge two has a nine mil difference, I might push it up to charge three even to get this three mil difference per 100 meters at 600 meters in that third column. Because I, I, I care about first round accuracy and it takes zero effort for me to switch to charge three. The only difference is going to be flight time. That's the only significant change. So that fifth column, time of flight in seconds, super straightforward. So for charge one, 600 meters, our time of flight in seconds is 12.7. For charge two, 600 meters, our time of flight is 23 seconds. For charge of three, our time of flight at 600 meters is 30.4. And our time of flight for charge four at 600 meters is 37.2. 
reason the time of flight is higher is we're shooting the mortar out with more velocity, so it's going to go up higher, spend more time in the air. Generally, this isn't a big deal. Um, 37 is a big difference from 15, um, so probably don't go charge 4, um, but charge 2, charge 3, 23 to 30 seconds as opposed to like 13 seconds on charge 1, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, that time is going to be the time you have to wait before you can make a correction. So you are adding 15 seconds before your round hits. However, you're also completely removing having to think about elevation. So if you don't have to think about elevation, you're saving yourself probably 20 to 40 seconds of doing math, depending on how good you're at, you are at it. So it's worth it. So essentially, if there's an elevation difference between you and your target, just go a charge up. Just, just go a charge up. Take that time of flight that's a little higher, and uh, don't worry about uh, about adjusting your elevation for your your uh, your height. A couple other things on this uh, mortar chart: you can see the azimuth correction per crosswind of one meters per second. I, I simply don't pay attention to this. Um, what I could do is I could pull out uh, some way to measure the wind at myself. However, the wind where I am and the wind where the target is are going to be different. I'm just going to assume they cancel out, and uh, if they don't cancel out, I'm just going to correct for it, my first correction. Usually, I'm fast enough and accurate enough to get a round on target in about a minute and a half, a minute to a minute and a half. That's close enough that sometimes I don't even need corrections anyway, so I find that wind is not an important factor, however it is there if you want to do it. Um, the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run through a full mission. Um, at full pace to show you how fast you can do this if you get some practice into it. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to pick a target. Uh, this uh, this building right here is going to be my CFF four call for fire four. Perfect. All right, uh, I'm just going to run this real quick. I'm going to start with my uh, my map tools on top here. I'm going to hop on my mortar. I'm going to sit here and uh, wait for the call to come in. Call comes in, call for fire 4. I'm going to rotate my arrow onto the call for fire, check my azimuth. My azimuth reads uh, 3190, so I'm going to get my mortar to 3190. 3189 works for me. Now I'm going to measure my range. I'm going to get this lined up. 1011. Uh, we're just short of 12. Go to equipment, M252. We're going to look for 1,200 meters. 1,200 meters. Uh, I noticed some elevation change in my target, so I'm going to go a charge up. 1,200 meters at charge 3 is going to be 1301. Uh, we're just a little under 1,200, so I'm going to shift it up by 2 mils. I'm going to look to go towards 1150, goes up, so I'm going to shift it by 2 mils. So 1303 is going to be my target. 1303. Uh, 1302 works for me. Charge 3, just going to make sure I'm on charge 3. Yeah, fire that round. And then we're going to fly ourselves down to this building here. Where are we at? We're all the way up here. So we should be landing. Our target is going to be this structure. So ideally, we're going to be landing within our vision here of this structure. Oh. Alrighty. Our round landed significantly off to the left. Ah, there it struck. So here's where our round landed. Uh, we just landed left of the target. Uh, we landed east of the target. So I'm going to do a very quick calculation. I'm not even going to place markers. I'm just going to be uh, fast about it. So we are at 3190. This is 3120. So we're going to make a roughly 50 mil correction right. So... That looks close enough to me. Um, keep in mind when we're shooting mortars, 
we're ideally not shooting them close enough to friendlies where this specific uh, we need to be incredibly specific with our with our uh, corrections if we are shooting close enough to friendlies that we need to be incredibly specific with our corrections then be incredibly specific um, however uh, the good enough method works when you don't have to worry about inaccuracy hurting friendlies when you can afford that inaccuracy now interestingly enough our round has landed not on target but about half of halfway to the target from where it first landed so we're just going to double the correction we made last time we're going to shift our azimuth ah i noticed uh, i noticed the mistake that i made what we did unintentionally and i say we it's it was entirely me is i fired at 3090 instead of 3190 so i was 100 mils off to the left so my 50 mil correction got us halfway there now I've noticed a weird issue with my mortar on this terrain. You'll notice my azimuth skips from about 32 to 3140. So we're gonna fire as close as we can. So our round should be landing uh, somewhere on this road surface to the right of the target, hopefully. It is not. Um, I'm not quite sure why we are missing to the left in the way that we are, but that is what it is. Uh, I'm going quickly. I'm not double checking my work, and I'm working by myself. Um, so, so missing is 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 something that's going to happen. I'm going to fire one last round uh, while I give my closing remarks here. I'm going to correct to the right a little more, and I'm going to elevate down to shoot a little further. Just uh, going to play that one by ear and see where that one lands. Um, but yeah. What's really important as a mortar crew is uh, getting corrections from friendlies. So something to note is you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to have your observer in the field tell you where your mortar landed. Because if they hear the mortar hit but they don't see where it went, you can't correct off of that. If you don't have any information, you can't correct. Cool. We got our mortar to land uh, more roughly where we wanted it to. Uh, and we're just going to fire that last round for fun. So what you want to do with that time of flight that we checked earlier, you're going to want to relay that time of flight to whoever is spotting for you, and then tell them about five seconds before your round is supposed to hit. That way, they can have their eyes up, not paying attention to the gunfight or whatever it may be, while your round lands, so they can see it and they can give you corrections to make. Um, if, they, if they're not ready to see it and they miss it, then that entire round was a waste. Alrighty, so as you can see, for some reason I'm uh, not able to narrow myself down. Ah, the, the issue here is uh, is the way that my azimuth is skipping because uh, of this hill, um, this hilly terrain. That's okay. This mortar is just in a uniquely bad spot to hit this target specifically. Uh, I painted all around it, but uh, that's just p me placing the mortar in a poor location uh, when instead I probably could have shifted this mortar back here and uh, been able to fire uh, much more accurately. Uh, regardless, not to fire any more rounds and embarrass myself any more than I already have. Um, make sure you double check everything. Uh, many rounds have landed short or far because they've been fired on the wrong charge. Um, if you're working with a team, communicate clearly. Uh, speak all four numbers. Um, try try not to try to avoid saying 3200 and say 3200 meters or 3200 meters or elevate 1839, etc. Because that's going to uh, uh, be more clear and allow your, your your teammates to understand what you're saying and for you guys to work more quickly. And uh, practice. Um, you can you can get good at working in mortar by yourself. Um, you can get very good at working with uh, on a mortar with a team. Um, with a team of uh, two or three uh, very experienced uh, people, you can you can get rounds on target um, in in less than 90 seconds, uh, pretty much every time, which is uh, really great. You get a round on target in 90 seconds, you get a second correction round in 45 to 50 seconds, and you're looking at having the first rounds of uh, of a fire for effect. You know, you're shooting with spread land in uh, less than three minutes, which is super ideal. So yeah, this has been uh, this has been Ace Three Mortars: The Basics of How to Operate the Mortar. Um, what we didn't cover is how to spread uh, when you're firing a fire mission. 
um, when you want your once you once you get the go ahead to shoot a whole bunch of them, you want to spread your your aim left and right and far and long or sorry and far and short. Um, but uh, we didn't talk about that today. We just talked about how to get a mortar on target. Uh, practice, practice, communicate clearly. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if there's uh, anything else you want to know, please drop it in the comments. I'd uh, be happy to help. Have a wonderful uh, have a wonderful day.